Hi, I'm News 12's Terry Anzer. Join the Volunteers in Education program okay, by... Okay, you know you see it every day on the road. We're from News 12, and we're doing a follow-up story on some people that bought dogs here and have had some problems. So they depend on the kindness of strangers who put out food. And the rearview mirror, I don't see anything at all. The administrators stopped us this in the parking Terry lot. Terry Anzer. Turn the cameras off, please. This used to be the dining room, but now it's the clean room. And to go in here... You... The News 12 I team obtained this list. Some stores make it easier for you to be prepared by displaying a lot of hurricane supplies all in one place. The next day, we got this letter from the school district, but we didn't get a warm reception. Well, I was hoping to be able to get a comment from you or from someone on the information that's on the Medicare.gov website showing that Teresa's Blake Worth has a lot of violations. Is this right now? Yeah, it is. Would you please turn it off? Now, you might find it hard to believe that people paid $30,000 to golf in weather like this. And some people find it hard to believe that two politicians who ran against each other back in 1992 could put their political differences aside to the degree that Bush and Clinton have to raise money for a humanitarian cause. Now, there is a possibility that their families will be rivals once again in the race for the White House in 2008. Check this out. There is a possibility that Clinton's wife, Senator Hillary Rodham Clinton, could be running against Florida Governor Jeb Bush, the son of the elder President Bush and the brother of the current president. But the elder Bush was quick to put that to rest today, saying flat out, Jeb isn't going to do it. Now, Governor Bush has been saying the same thing himself, but reporters keep asking. Live for the one to turn to in rainy Hope Sound. Terry, When we checked federal court records, we found long lists of local businesses that have been sued for failing to provide access for the handicapped as required by law, including one business that serves people with disabilities. It was a surprise to us that there were so many who came into the building who supposedly could be served. Donna Bateman sells wheelchairs, so she was shocked when her Lake Worth business, Action Mobility, was slapped with a lawsuit. It claimed her parking lot didn't meet the standards of the ADA, the Americans with Disabilities Act. Never mind that all the spaces are double wide. Technically speaking, we were wrong because we didn't have blue painted spaces. And what it turned out to be was nothing more than a shakedown for cash. So Congressman Foley invited Donna to testify on Capitol Hill for his bill to change the ADA. It would give businesses 90 days to fix accessibility problems before having to face a lawsuit and hefty attorney fees. It costs us less than $100 to correct the infractions, $2,000 in attorney fees. Also testifying was actor Clint Eastwood. It didn't make his day when his California hotel was sued for ADA violations, running up a huge legal bill. These lawyers, they, they come along and they end up with a, driving off in a big Mercedes and the disabled person ends up riding off in a wheelchair. Ed Law. He's the dirty Harry of ADA lawsuits in Palm Beach County. Disabled in a 1987 diving accident, the former baseball player for Indian River Community College now lives in Orlando, but has sued a dozen businesses around here, including two strip clubs, because the lap dance room wasn't accessible. Some people think that by going after strip clubs, you're kind of uh, making a, a farce up. Nah, I'm not discriminatory in any case. Doesn't matter if it's a burger joint or a strip club. He's also sued the Duffy's restaurant chain and the city of Lake Worth because of problems like this in the parking lot at Lake Worth Pier. As you can see, I'm not making it up this ramp here because it doesn't correlate with federal code laws with ADA. So I'm going to have to now wheel a lot further in maybe 85, 90 degree weather to find out how I'm going to get in the parking lot. The Lake Worth lawsuit is still in court, but most cases result in an out-of-court settlement. If the case comes up and my attorney probably says to the other attorney, for Eddie's time and concern, I feel he's warranted a certain amount of damages. They agree on it and it's over with. He won't say how much. And then there are the fees for Ed's New Jersey-based attorney, Anthony Brady. How many lawsuits would you say you've filed here in Florida in recent years regarding ADA access? Oh, perhaps 50. 
He admits to collecting fees of up to $75,000 for each case, but insists it's not about the money. I chose as an attorney to represent the little guy. But Brady has also sued plenty of little guys. Why go after a tiny restaurant like La Fogata? Uh, fair enough, because uh, it's important to have bathroom facilities for a disabled person. This family-owned restaurant in North Palm Beach fought back by hiring attorney Gary Susser, the father of a disabled five-year-old. I see the problem, and oh, shame on you, and a pox on your house for not complying. But as a professional, as a litigator, I think the proper way of handling the problem is you fix it or else I'll see you in court. But Ed Law says there's no excuse for not complying with ADA, which has been around since 1992, and 90 days notice won't help. These people are in denial. And it's all federal law. It's federal code. Four years after her dramatic testimony in Washington, Donna Baitland still supports Foley's bill, but she's nervous about any changes in ADA. If it weren't for constant, you know, lots and lots of lawsuits that were, that seemed to be for just money for attorneys, it's the best law we've ever had because it's given people like myself access to public um, facilities. Congressman Foley will try again next week to pass his bill, giving businesses 90 days to correct violations before being sued. And Ed Law says he intends to keep filing lawsuits as long as he keeps rolling into businesses that are not accessible. It's been nearly three years since we first met Lenny Hoover. Lenny's parents believe he got mercury poisoning from thimerosal, a preservative that was in the vaccines he got as a baby. And they believe that's what made him autistic. Careful! Life is like a leap of faith when your child has been diagnosed with autism. You're told over and over again there's, there's no known cause or no known cure. At 18 months, Lenny Hoover seemed lost. Home video shows him constantly spinning and screaming. At age two, he stopped talking. When we got the autism diagnosis, we had no hope. It was like a, a shut door. And it was devastating. Now, he's unstoppable. <laughs> We're going to show them how I climb. What made the difference, his parents say, was a treatment called chelation, drugs which allow the body to eliminate heavy metals like mercury. Chelation works. These kids are salvageable. These kids are injured kids who can be helped. By his fourth birthday, Lenny's autism was hardly noticeable, and when we told his story on News 12, other autistic kids That's tried right. chelation. Got, Some got think. better, others didn't. I've known no child that was ever harmed by chelation therapy, and I've been involved with this for four years now. It's worth a shot. Lenny's story reached all the way to this little boy in California. Jamie Handley's parents saw the report and tried chelation for their son. And when they saw improvement, they launched this national website, linking families like the Hoovers with other parents desperately seeking a cure. It's an epidemic. It's astounding. Everybody knows an autistic child. The website, called Generation Rescue, is aimed at the families of children born since the late 1980s who may have received mercury in vaccines with thimerosal before the government asked manufacturers to remove the preservative. Do you think you're a brave guy? And he thinks his mom and dad are special too. They help me get this mercury out of me. Going back and looking at those videos, brings back those memories, and they're not good memories. And uh, it's, it's painful, it really is. Not painful anymore. Lenny is almost seven and still needs a special diet and speech therapy, but he's doing so well that his kindergarten teacher didn't even know he was diagnosed with autism. His parents are saving for college, but he has other plans. I want to be a structure worker. While Lenny is on fast forward, his family's lawsuit against the vaccine makers moves at a snail's pace through the courts. But Lenny's dad says families should not wait to try any treatment that could help. We're not here to point the finger at everybody. We're not here to, you know, there's too much of that going on. Harriet and I want to focus on helping kids. And that's, that's where the focus should always be. Let's get the kids better. 
Well, according to the Centers for Disease Control, there is no proof that there is a link between childhood vaccines and autism. But Generation Rescue says parents should be aware of the possible risks when having their children vaccinated. The group says you should ask for vaccines that are labeled thimerosal free. Read the package insert yourself to be sure. Also, check with your pediatrician about spacing out the shots instead of giving several all at once. For links to more information, visit our website at WPECnews12.com. Well, Alan, since our story first aired, the I-Team has heard from lots of people who ended up with huge vet bills and broken hearts. But some of the defective dogs weren't just sick. They had inbred genetic problems that veterinarians say are associated with puppy mills. An 80-pound Rottweiler born with defective hip sockets, two miniature dachshunds with a genetic brain disorder, and a poodle with a collapsed lung, all purchased at Puppy Palace in Boynton Beach. We're from News 12. And we're doing a follow-up story on some people that bought dogs here and have had some problems. The manager had a camcorder to tape my questions. I'd like to talk to you about a couple of miniature dachshunds, but wouldn't answer them in front of our News 12 camera. We came back here to follow up on a News 12 I-Team report tracing defective dogs from local pet stores to high-volume breeders, mostly in Missouri. Animal rights groups took this undercover video of what they call puppy mills, where dogs are confined, constantly producing puppies in deplorable conditions. Not true, says Puppy Palace. They even put this sign on the wall. That's the biggest lie that they, that they have. Dan Diesti paid nearly $500 to buy this miniature dachshund for his daughter. A month later, home video shows little Eddie limping, banging into walls, and having seizures. The doctor says this is not right. The family spent more than $1,000 on a specialist who consulted with the University of Florida Veterinary School and shaved Eddie's head for a spinal tap. Diagnosis, a neurological disease attacking his brain. And the cause either the possibilities of interbreeding overbreeding or breeding sick animals another dachshund had the same problems sweet pea turned out to be eddie's sister also from puppy palace both dogs will soon have to be put down it's tough you know you get you get real used to the animal and uh, <clears throat> News 12 traced the dachshunds to a Missouri breeder who was suspended from the prestigious American Kennel Club until she stops breeding the dog she has and starts over with new ones. But the manager told me the store is still selling her dogs under a different registry. Other Puppy Palace dogs are sold with no papers at all. When Brittany Webster spent her summer job money, $450, for a Rottweiler puppy, she had no way of knowing the dog was born with a genetic hip disorder and would need an operation costing more than $5,000. If we can't raise the money uh, pretty soon, um, they tell us we have to put her down. Brittany's mom went back to Puppy Palace to ask if the store could help. I asked him point blank. I said, I want you to do the right thing. I want you to do the moral thing. At least give me my money back so we can put money into her fund to help her live and the answer was no all the store offered was a gift certificate for another puppy to replace duchess it's not just a dog that you might have to put down it's a member of your family that may have to pass away and you have to do it because some jerk didn't have the guts to tell you and just wants money while the websters hold bake sales and car washes to raise money to save their dog deborah and tony nesser are taking puppy palace to court one day i took her outside and she just did a face plant in the grass and collapsed so far and the nessers have spent five thousand dollars saving their poodle nikita another pup we traced to missouri she nearly died from kennel cough and has a permanently collapsed lung. It was just heartbreaking for us. It was, I cried for a week straight. It was horrible. After seeing our first I-Team story on Puppy Palace, the Nessers asked the store for a refund. But like all the customers in this story, they had signed this waiver, giving up their rights to medical reimbursements under Florida's Puppy Lemon Law. They say the store told them it was a health guarantee. The store says the buyer should have read the paperwork. Now the Nessers hope to send a message in court. If enough of us get together and let these people have it that it, sooner or later people are going to stop going to their store they're going to have to stop importing these puppies the way they do we found two other cases in small claims court where puppy palace was ordered to pay refunds and medical expenses totaling hundreds of dollars the store also has an unsatisfactory rating with the better business bureau as for the owners of puppy palace they continue to refuse our requests for an on-camera interview